For the next topic, I'd like to talk about emergency care, one of the most important and uh, one of the most interesting topics for most of us practitioners. Okay. And we've hit on some of the topics that are associated with this, like how we're going to diagnose it with thermal stimulus. Um, we talked about leaving teeth open versus closed. Um, I want to talk about decision making in the treatment plan. First off, uh, I think we need to decide, find out is it endo or non-endo. If it's non-endonic, we're going to give them a different treatment plan. Uh, if we feel it's like myofascial pain, And the tip-offs to this are pain referred outside the endodontic zone, above my cheekbone, below the border, my mandible, behind my ear, across the midline, that's not endo. Okay, most often it's myofascial pain, pain of muscular origin, and we can, di we can confirm that diagnosis by having the patient open halfway and palpating their temporalis and their masseter muscles left and right simultaneously. You'll typically find a trigger point in the temporal fossa over the external auditory meatus, under the cheekbone, maybe right in the corner of the, of the angle of the jaw. Um, if we figure that this is the cause of it, uh, the other uh, salient uh, tip-offs will be no thermal sensitivity, pain of longer standing duration, uh, evidence of head and neck pain, head and neck uh, 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 injury, um, bruxing of the teeth, all those things can cause this. What is our treatment plan here in this emergency case? Number one, soft foods. No gum, chewing, any more. <laughs> I tell your patients, like, quit doing that. Don't do that again the rest of your life because this is a recurring situation. We're going to have uh, uh, consistent doses of an NSAID. Okay, a low consistent dose, I'd rather have you take one ibuprofen four times a day or one to leave in the morning, one to leave at the, in the evening for two weeks straight, every day, no matter how you feel, reducing the whole inflammatory load of those muscles, you've got a best, best chance of things healing up. Um, if they can't take NSAIDs, it's a lot more difficult to get them comfortable. We're gonna have um, deep tissue work. Excellent, uh, excellent reason to get a massage therapist involved here. Um, I recommend that you try a bunch of them out in your town. You've got to find a male and a female massage therapist that can do deep tissue therapeutic massage. Uh, that's going to help hugely. Um, another thing is cold on the trigger point, heat, or cold and heat. Whatever makes it better. I put peas or ice in a bag with a, a paper towel over it, um, hot wash rag, uh, a heating pad. Make sure that you never go to sleep on a heating pad. You could be burned seriously. Okay, so non-endo, these are the things we're going to do. We're going to tell patients how to palpate their own muscle mass, diagnose themselves, and then they can institute these things without seeing a doctor again. Okay, so endo pain. Okay, vital. We have vital and necrotic. Okay. Pulp, no pulp. We also have previous treatment. Let me address this first. Previous treatment. We're never going to dive into a retreat on an emergency basis, ever. It's going to make everything worse. It's going to be hard to get the tooth numb, especially if they have swelling. Uh, you, it's going to wreck your schedule. You're going to be frustrated. These are the hardest cases you're ever going to do to get posts and files and gutta perch and carriers out of root canals. And uh, they're not going to feel better. What they're going to do, feel better quickest, is if you give them a really effective antibiotic and pain meds. I've never seen an endodontic failure not get comfortable on the right antibiotics. So let's talk a little bit about antibiotics. Okay. 
Uh, let me just start by saying never give erythromycin. It doesn't work. Your patient's going to throw up and uh, most of the bacteria are not sensitive to erythromycin. erythromycin. If you have a situation where they can't take penicillin, then your choices are for penicillin allergic I'm going to consider biaxin, 500 milligrams. Okay, there's a macrolide. This is the next generation after erythromycin. This one actually works. It's a sister or uh, brother product to Zithromax. Zithromax, I don't have the same uh, excellent results. This is uh, one tablet BID, just two a day, and that's for five days. With macrolides, there's a persistent tissue effect uh, two to three days after you stop dosing with it. Okay. Um, the other alternative is clindamycin. Um, the recommended is 300 milligrams TID. Uh, I have problems with that. I give uh, usually. Uh, I would say half of my patients that I give 300 milligrams TID start having some stomach upset at about three and four days, and I don't want them to stop their antibiotics. So I'm going to give them 150 milligrams. This is off label, and it's going to be uh, one tab QID four times a day until gone seven days. Okay. These are my two primary uh, non penicillin antibiotics. You can add metronidazole to any other antibiotic. Okay, metronidazole is an antiparasitic, but it acts kind of like the uh, clavulanic acid in Augmentin does. It's going to take care of a lot of bacteria that might not be uh, really sensitive to these. We give this 500 milligrams um, QID for seven days. Um, I've used it with clindamycin, I've used it with penicillin if they can't afford augmentin. This is really helpful. Make sure that you tell the patients this is like an abuse. If they take this, they can't even have a beer or a glass of wine or they'll be terribly sick. Okay, um, the other antibiotics is, let me give you, get a new page here, okay. is the ones that for patients that can take penicillin. If it's a prophylactic dose, then we're looking at Caflex, 500 milligrams, TID for seven days. If it's acute, I'm going to give them Augmentin, which is Caflex with clavulanic acid. Give them 500 milligrams, TID, seven days. and this will get them comfortable. They will start feeling better in 12 hours. This is absolutely the most effective antibiotic for acute infections in endo. Uh, Craig Baumgartner did a microbiologic study and found that endo cultures from every continent in the world were significantly sensitive to augmentin, and that's why it is the silver bullet. So if you have a patient that's intensely in pain, if they have a previously treated root canal that's not working, this is a great antibiotic. Okay, so back to emergency care. Okay, so we've gotten rid of the non-endodontic pain. Uh, we've talked about uh, previously treated endo um, cases, and so now we're back to vital and necrotic. Let's talk about vital first. How do we know that we have an irreversible inflammation? We have a prolonged reaction to cold and or heat, or no response. If you pro prolong reactions to cold and heat stimulus, tell us it's vital degenerating. And there's only two things that'll get this tooth comfortable. Short term, an inset. If you or the patient can't meet the day they call up, put them on uh, two ibuprofen, uh, four ibuprofen every four to six hours, or two Aleve every 12 hours. That'll give you one to two days, maybe one to three days before the pulp is beyond that point of, of, of getting better with that. Uh, the most important and, and most definitive thing you can do is extirpation. 
remove the offending organ, that would be the pulp, okay? In medium and large canals, I'm gonna broach, I'm gonna use a number 25 bent broach. In the small canals, then I'm going to uh, do my typical negotiation to, to a size 15, uh, two or one millimeter beyond. Okay, now we're left at this point to make a decision in the path, treatment path here, uh, open versus closed. Okay, open versus closed. <clears throat> if you choose to leave the tooth open, you can get your mind around that being okay, you're done. You're gonna put a sponge in the access cavity, you're gonna take the rubber dam off, you're gonna adjust the occlusion and send them home and know that they're gonna be comfortable. If it's close, if you need to close it, then your next step is cut initial shape. Uh, calcium hydroxide. Pain meds. Okay, let's look at uh, Necrotic. Okay, all I have to do is relieve the pressure. That's it. Now, many times just relieving the pressure during the initial access, getting some exudate out of the tooth, you can close it up and it's gonna be fine. Um, most people think that if you leave any tooth open, it would be a necrotic, not a vital case. I would argue that I would rather have all of these closed and have all of my vital cases open because the, okay, the pulp you take out of this root canal is not as simple as you may think. Okay, If we close this tooth up, we can remove the pulp from the primary canal and this little fragment of tissue right here is going to make your patient really miserable if it's closed empty if it's closed with calcium hydroxide really miserable for 72 hours pain meds um, if we leave it open that pulp tissue remaining in the side canals that i'm not going to be able to remove until i do my whole procedure is not going to be a factor because there's going to be no back pressure on it 